Hey guys, it's Mrs. Baker. And Miss Zinnaker. You know, I know that you guys are just waiting with bated breath because we showed you at the end of the last video what we're going to be talking about now. But here we are. We're here ready. We are. Here we go. And so what we talked about here is this different kind of ionic compound is one that actually has a transition metal in it, which um, again, it's going to be a very similar rules to what we just did. But the only difference with transition metal is that we don't know what the charge is to be able to either crisscross or figure it out by math. So we're gonna start over here with the naming to formula one. And so notice in all of these, there's a Roman numeral in here where we never had any Roman numerals before. The great thing about the Roman numeral is because we don't know the charge of copper, that Roman numeral tells us that that copper has a two charge. Now remember, copper is a metal, so we now know that copper actually has a plus two charge. I hope they know their Roman numerals. I hope so too. Okay, so anyway, that Roman numeral two means the copper has a plus two charge. Chloride, we go over to the periodic table, and we know, you know, remember you guys need to have your periodic tables out with the charges on them, has a minus one charge. So remember, if the math way, the copper is a plus two, chloride has a minus one, that I would know it would need to be CuCl2, again, mathematically speaking. And remember, Miss Zinniger says, you know, to remind you guys about how to do the, the crisscross way, so the two becomes the subscript there, the one becomes the subscript there, but we don't write the one. So either way, we get there. All right? So let's just do one more example. Sounds, Sounds great. Good. All right. So chromium, oh, wait, is that CH? The ch chromium. Oh. Oh, I, th I think that's going to be a C. Oh. Okay. So guys, really, you have to find that the element on your periodic table so you know what the actual symbol is. Chromium is a plus four. Sulfide is a minus two. How'd you get that plus four again? Oh, that's right. Because that's IV is four in case they don't know oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. again, so the Roman numeral will tell me the charge. So a plus four and a minus two. If I do my crisscross, I go four becomes there, two becomes there. So I've got CR4S2. Well, hold on, Mrs. Baker. But those, I think you can actually reduce down to its lower lowest ratio between chromium oh, and forgot. sulfur. So what should it be if we can reduce those? Okay, if they can both be divided by two, so it's actually just going to be CR2S. Sounds great. Awesome. And if you think about it, guys, if you have one of them that with the minus two charge, wait, did I do that wrong? <gasps> uh oh, we missed cross. Oh, what the? Oh my God! Get, erase, 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 sorry, erase. Sorry. Oh, start over. You know what? Retake. I think. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even crisscross right. Oh. I guess we all make mistakes, right? Ah, whatever. So four comes here, two comes here. So when I said C R two S. Four. We can reduce it. Okay. There we C -R -S go. CRS2. Okay. That's you see how more when like I it. double checked those charges, I caught that mistake. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, so two minus twos give me a minus four. One plus four gives me a plus four. Done. Okay. Easy. All yeah. right. There we go. So let's do the reverse route though. If we're looking on the left-hand side, going from the formula to the name. So if you notice here, there's no Roman numerals to give us a hint as to what the charges are going to be for those uh, transition metals. So we have to look a little bit deeper into what how the transition metals are actually bonded. So for this first one, we can just uh, follow the rules similar to the last video. Uh, Fe is going to be the symbol for iron. Make sure you look that up correctly. So you can write down. Fe's name. Got it. Leave a spot though, because you are going to have to input a Roman numeral because we don't know what kind of iron we're talking about here. Remember, just going from names to formulas, those Roman numerals have to be listed in the written name. So, guys, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. So, you have to find it on the periodic table. You have to find, even if you know Fe's iron, you have to find it on the periodic table. Do you know the charge or do you not? Sorry, go ahead. No. Great. So the next one is going to be chlorine. And remember, when we're naming ionic compounds, we drop that ending to an IDE. So it's going to turn out to be chloride. All right. So now let's figure out what that charge is on iron. So if you like the crisscross method, you can do an uncross method. <laughs> so if you look 
iron technically has a one there, but remember we don't really write it. If you want to write it in, you can to help yourself. If you were to uncross the two over to the Fe and the one over to chlorine, we would have Fe would be a plus two charge and chlorine would be a minus one charge. Now make sure that agrees with your nonmetal on the periodic table. That's going to have a minus one charge. So we can write in the Roman numeral for iron for a plus two is just going to be two. All right, so the reverse crisscross. Again, the math way, if you know chloride's a minus one and you have two of them, then you know that the iron, if there's only one of them, you actually need to have, um, you know, just one. So one of the iron with two of the chlorides. Sorry, I'm the math way. She's the crisscross way. All right. All Go right, ahead. let's try another one. So um, for this next one, we have iron in it again and chlorine, but you'll notice that the formula is a little bit different. So you can just straight copy and paste iron, leave that gap to figure out its charge, and it's still chlorine, so we will have chloride. So let's do, uh, let's do the math way this time. So chlorine has that negative one charge, but there's three of them there. So really, it's going to be a minus three charge in order to make this neutral and equals zero, the charge for iron would have to be plus three. Plus three, yeah. Plus three. All right. Okay. So you can write in a three. You can also do the uncross method, take the three over to the top of iron and that one that's hidden there over to chlorine and iron still gets that plus three charge. So use which way uh, that best suits you. Okay. I want to give you guys one other one. So what if we had F E two S three, where we actually tricky. had a subscript on each one of them. Go ahead. What sure. Do you want to do? All right. Um, I really like the crisscross method, so okay. I'm going to uncross my subscripts. Just draw a line right there. So the three goes over to iron, and that two goes over to sulfur. So it really should be F E has a plus three charge, and sulfur has a minus two. Double check the periodic table. Yes, sulfur does have a minus two charge. Mm -hmm. So this one is going to be iron three, and it's instead of sulfur, it's going to be sulfide. Okay, we just wanted to show you one where we actually had subscripts on both. Okay, so math wise, if I have three sulfurs each with a minus two, that's a minus two, minus two, minus two, which means it's a minus six. Therefore, my iron has to be a plus six, but because I have two of them, that plus six has to be divided by two to give me three. All right, we good? We're good. Awesome. All right, tune in next time. We'll be going on to polyatomic ions. Ooh, bye.